With Apple's transition to their custom-built M1 central processing unit, Apple brought the home field advantage it's always had over Windows and Android, centralized design, and in-house unification between hardware and software production, home to the MacBook. The ARM-based chip has received wide praise since its debut, optional plug for previous M1 video, leaving competitors scrambling to catch up. Here's the state of the CPU wars and the chips most likely to compete directly with the reigning champ, the mighty M1. When you're talking about processors, you can't avoid talking about Qualcomm. The California-based tech giant is the biggest producer of silicon in the world. There's a good chance you're watching this on a device powered by a Qualcomm chip. Nearly every smartphone is powered by a member of the Qualcomm Snapdragon CPU family. Even Apple's iPhone, up until the iPhone 11 family, featured Qualcomm silicone hardware. Though that ended with the introduction of Apple's custom iPhone chip, the U1. Nevertheless, Qualcomm's prolific Snapdragon line dominates the smartphone market worldwide. With its recent collaborations with Microsoft, Qualcomm seems to be pushing into the PC processing world, ultimately producing Microsoft's SQ1 and, more recent, SQ2. The SQ1 and SQ2 are custom-designed processors for the latest evolution of Microsoft's Surface line, the Surface X, and are meant to be Microsoft's answer to the M1 chip. Microsoft had hoped that control over the production and collaboration between design teams and software engineers would deliver similar exceptional performance. The SQ1 is a Snapdragon-based chip, specifically a modified version of Snapdragon's 8CX octa-core CPU. The SQ1 was tweaked for higher performance with a specific focus on boosting graphic systems, which falls in line nicely with Microsoft's creator-focused marketing strategy for the Surface line. The SQ2 made its appearance a year later in a refreshed Surface Pro X, boasting an increase from 13 to 15 hours of endurance and, and bringing light availability to the Surface Pro X. The SQ2 was apparently based on the second generation of the 8CX, though Qualcomm and Microsoft haven't confirmed too many details about the design process. The second custom chip from Microsoft also introduced a significant price hike to the lightweight computer. Both processors offer exceptional performance when working as intended. Unfortunately, the transition to a custom chipset was not as smooth on Windows as it was on Mac. The SQ1 and SQ2 were developed on an ARM-based processing system just like the Apple M1. The difficulty here is that while Mac OS is designed to integrate ARM processors seamlessly, Windows is much less suited to the different variety of processors. The overwhelming majority of Windows computers use the CISC framework that powers x86 processors. Thus, most Windows applications are specifically coded for the CISC system. When the SQ1 chip made its debut in the Windows Surface Pro X in October of 2019, it was immediately buried under a pile of compatibility issues that affect performance and productivity. Microsoft has improved the situation greatly since then, both by pushing apps to adapt to the new processor and working to improve emulators to run foreign apps of the SQ1 and SQ2. But the problem is still a long way from being fixed. The solution Microsoft was relying on was the release of Windows X, an OS variant of Windows built from the ground up for ARM systems conceived after the failure of Windows 10S. If you haven't heard of Windows 10S, don't worry. There's not much to tell. Windows X was supposed to be released as a replacement for 10S and a new UI to support dual screens in the fall of 2020, but we all know how 2020 went. Windows X has been delayed with no solid release date. The delay has shifted X's aim significantly. Over the course of the last year, we've seen Microsoft change what X is supposed to be designed for from different form factors to a simpler, almost mobile OS intended for more agile devices used on the go. Even when it does release in full, it currently looks like Windows X will be a scaled back, lightweight system not meant for powerful tasks like Photoshop or gaming, which the M1 on Mac OS accomplishes with little difficulty until you get into the truly heavy workloads. 
There have been reports that Windows X may not be able to run desktop apps at all at launch, leaving users with access to only applications on the Windows Store, both drawing comparisons to Chrome OS and reminiscent of the disastrous Windows 8 rollout at the beginning of the PC tablet convergence. All of this is really a shame. By all accounts, the SQ1 and 2 are actually good processors. Microsoft just has yet to design an environment for them to reach their true potential. Microsoft will undoubtedly power through with the SQ line, and our money is on the line greatly improving in the future, but currently, the chipset can't hold a candle to the M1. Potentially much more promising is Intel's upcoming lineup of 12th generation CPUs going by the project name Alder Lake. The project has been in development for more than five years and plans to release in the last half of 2021. Alder Lake processors will be hybrid CPUs, combining high-performance cores and high-efficiency cores into one processor that can scale up or down its output to match whatever the user needs in real time. Alder Lake chips are still on the CISC system, which typically is used for heavy-duty gaming or video editing PCs and avoided for more agile mobile devices on account of their superb power output but slow startup speed. Intel is hoping to change that by the hybrid design of Alder Lake, essentially using the high-efficiency cores to provide the responsiveness and always-on capability of ARM processors without draining battery life, while still being able to take on bigger tasks such as 4K video editing or high-refresh gaming when the power-hungry high-performance cores take over. This system has the potential to provide the best of both the PC power user and the on-the-go mobile computing worlds. Depending on how the actual implementation goes, Alder Lake has a real shot at competing with Apple's in-house chipset. Where Intel cannot compete is the ability to design software and hardware as a single cohesive unit, and especially with the bicameral approach Alder Lake is taking, that could be a fatal flaw. The design of the upcoming 12th generation CPUs switching tasks between cores, while relatively common on smartphones, has never been attempted on laptops and desktops, and according to PC Gamer, could confuse the Windows operating system. The OS for Windows needs to know CPU architecture to execute all the background subroutines our computers run all the time without direct user input. These subroutines may not know which core is active in Intel's Alder Lake architecture since they could change at any given moment. So, unless both the hardware and integration with the software are absolutely perfect, Windows may cause Alder Lake to ramp up or down their output based on subroutines, not user demand. Again, the advantage of the M1 and the SQ1 and SQ2 have here, a streamlined, unified design, is not an option for Intel. That is to say, for Alder Lake to work, Intel is relying on Microsoft to bring the Windows OS up to snuff. Failure to execute seamless integration of the hardware and software sides of the 12th generation CPUs would, at best, invalidate the point of the bicameral Alder Lake design, and, at work, could cause outright crashes. With Windows focusing so much on ARM systems, it wouldn't be a stretch of the imagination to envision a messy rollout for Intel's latest CISC powerhouses. Of course, Intel is as big in computer processors as Qualcomm is in mobile CPUs. The company is also on its 12th major wave of silicon hardware, so betting against them may not be the smartest play. Regardless of whether Alder Lake proves a revolutionary processor system or a gigantic flop, it will be extremely interesting to watch. Altogether, Apple's M1 is the obvious choice for ARM-based CPUs currently. But to stay on top, they may have their work cut out for them. If Windows can overcome its difficulties adapting to ARM systems, the SQ line's future installments could easily measure up or even surpass the M1. And if Intel can pull off its move to have their cake and eat it too, designing a processor theoretically capable of the snappiness of mobile processors and the heavy lifting of desktop CPUs, Apple may even find themselves regretting their move away from CISC systems.